Okay, hello everybody, welcome to my channel, Razor here. Hello, uh, Bob, Bob Drinkwater, hello Garu, hello Mateo, hello Marius, thank you for being here. Okay, I'm gonna be here just for a few minutes and then I'm going to disappear because the photograph is just, you know, uh, I, gotta, I need, I don't have too much space on my, on my, screen okay the colors i have here are titanium white cadmium yellow cadmium orange cadmium red permanent alizarin crimson raw amber cobalt blue and a black hello monique <laughs> okay oh, i got my camera here i know you can see my camera uh, some people just asked me about my setup. The camera is just in some kind of a metal bridge. And when I paint, I get closer to the camera like this. It's kind of just kind of touching with my cheek. The camera sometimes, and that's how I paint. I stay here to move my eyes, you know, from left to right. I got the image on my screen next to my canvas. You see my canvas here. Okay. And I read the comments just there, in front of me. A little bit to the left. Hello, Ben. Hello, Sylvia. Okay, I want to stay just a few minutes just to show you how I sketch. Okay. Let me... Okay. Here I got the photograph. First thing that I do, I squint on my eyes, you know, and I compare with the photograph. Okay. Something like this. And then what I do, I move my eyes really fast, you know, from left to right. And sometimes I do something kind of maybe funny that I close one eye and then close the other one. And I do that movement and I start sketching just like this. It would be something pretty simple. And as you see, I move my eyes kind of fast between the drawing and, and my, uh, between my drawing and the photograph. Okay. Now you will know that you got the photograph on, uh, a link to the photograph on the description box. Okay. Now I gotta disappear. Okay, here's the photograph. Okay. Now, let's see. Put in the sketching. I'm gonna draw the face a little bit smaller. And then I'm doing the same. Uh, I'm closing one eye, I draw, and then I close the other eye, and I open the other one, obviously. I draw. Check out proportions. I always check out proportions. You know, the regular measurements. Okay, uh, with that is enough, you know, I'm gonna draw and paint at the same time. I don't need, I don't need too much on my canvas. Okay. 
Let's start using raw umber. You know you're free to ask me any question. I basically just right now just try to copy just the darker values which is half of the face. Hello, Nolan. Hello, Evelyn. Uh, Evelyn is asking me, do you always divide the face into thirds? Yes, I do that all the time. Uh, you know, maybe I shouldn't do that, but uh, uh, because uh, sometimes I sketch and it's just like I don't need to do that, you know because by you doing this so many times you ended up kind of having some uh, kind of second nature about the proportions that means that kind of automatically without thinking I ended up just placing the eyes the nose and the mouth kind of on the right position but just because of repetition and that's because it's not like intuition or anything like that it's just because I've been doing this so many times okay but anyway, knowing that, I just love to be aware of every step I take during my painting process. Okay, at some point when I paint, kind of, uh, definitely at some point, kind of stop thinking. I, I, don't, I don't even know, like just kind of enjoy just painting. But from time to time, I always check out drawing, and when I check out my drawing, I go over proportions. I go all, always over about this, this about checking out these measurements. Okay, and at the same time, I recommend this to everybody because sometimes, when we are beginners, you know, we got distracted about these measurements, and it's pretty easy just to end up with a longer nose, or a bigger chin, or a shorter nose. Okay, it's much better to have these proportions. And even if we don't get the likeness, at least we're gonna see a nice face, okay? We're gonna see that everything is in place, that nothing is off. And I think that's that's pretty good, you know, when somebody's a beginner just to see that you got a nice, a nice, a nice portrait in terms of proportions. And from there, just by repetition, you ended up, and by practicing more and more, you know, we ended up, uh, ended up just getting the likeness slowly. Uh, hello, Marius. Uh, can you please explain about the thickness of layers? What we should do in order to avoid cracks? Okay, uh, the thing about the painting cracking is about the dry time between the layers. If, let's say that I paint this with it doesn't matter how thick or thin is my uh, this layer, okay? And I wait, I wait just for maybe one day or two days. It's not completely dry, okay? And I paint on top of that using any medium, let's say liquid, who dries really fast, okay? We use liquid. I use liquid. That means that the second layer dries faster than the first layer. 
That's why it cracked. After maybe a month, two months, we see the cracking on the surface. It does because one layer dry, dried faster than the, the previous one. Okay, now the, the thing is, uh, uh, fan over lean technique what it does obviously when we do use the technique the first layer has uh, we usually use more tropinoid or mineral spirit and the next layers we add in uh, we add more and more linseed oil okay and that kind of uh, keep the drying time in an order that one layer dries dries and then the other one dries then the other one dries and no one is drying not I mean no one no no new layers drying on top of the previous one faster than the previous one and that way at the end you know we prevent that from cracking but usually I paint the La Prima I mean not always but here in YouTube usually don't touch my painting after finish up every session I spend you know here like three hours Two from two to three hours, and <clears throat> I try to to do as much as possible. And I don't know. I mean, maybe I should retouch my painting after finish up. Maybe, but it's just my a personal thing for me. You know, it's just like I check out my painting, I see my mistakes. You know, and I see okay next time I gotta pay attention to this and that. My mistake it was about a value mistake you know it was about color it was about temperature lightness uh lightness is different and I, I don't go so hard on myself on lightness because i know that's something that sometimes i i, I get the lightness sometimes i don't and that's kind of pretty difficult you know to achieve a lightness sometimes I gotta say that unlucky. I got lucky enough to get the likeness. Sometimes kind of fast. Yeah, but it's just like that, you know. For the likeness, we need more, more time. We need to check out the painting more. We need to to take a rest, like uh, maybe a couple of days, and then go back to the painting, and then you know, check out the mistakes. Hello, daughter of Juhu. Michael Harrison, do you sell these types of instructional paintings when you are done with them? Oh, yeah, yeah, I used to sell them, I'm gonna, um, I used to sell them, I'm gonna do it again, and maybe um, in a couple of weeks. I got a website where I got some paintings, but it's not updated, okay? I'm gonna update that maybe in a, in a couple of weeks with new paintings. The link is in the description box. Okay, let's continue down my eyes and comparing. I think the size of the face is okay. Yeah. Mm, oh. Okay, I'm gonna paint the background. I'm just using raw umber. Hello, Mr. D. I've been wondering why you paint the light brown behind. Oh, you mean uh, the, my canvas? Yeah, sometimes I paint it gray. Now, lately, I'm painting this, this kind of burnt sienna. But uh, I got this color by mixing orange and blue, acrylics. Orange and blue. Yes. I turned down this maybe 20 minutes ago. It's already dry because acrylics. Eh? 
and we'll be sh we'll, we'll be, we'll, I want to be sure that this is uh, transparent. You know, when it's transparent, it, show, it kind of shows more of the the weight of the canvas beneath, beneath, and kind of kind of glow a little bit more than being solid. It's not like the best way to do it. Sometimes I love a solid, opaque, gray canvas. Okay. Yeah, it's up to anyone. Some people are gonna say that black, a black classical canvas maybe is gonna be better, like Caravaggio paintings. Some people are gonna say that transparent, burnt sienna canvas is gonna be better. You gotta try. There. One thing for sure, if we got uh, intense colors, a base, it's gonna show through the layers, okay? Imagine that I have an intense orange. Doesn't matter how much paint I add, that's gonna show a little bit. It does obviously the color that I place, I put down on top. It's gonna be a little bit different. Just just putting the same color on top of a black canvas or a white canvas. Yeah, now I'm doing what I showed you at the beginning. I squint down one eye and then the other eye and then I pimple my eyes really fast. You wanna see me again? <laughs> That's not funny, but... Let me put my face again here. Okay. Here I am. Hey. Okay, I do this. I got the canvas here. I got the YouTube here. Okay, I squint on my eyes, and then I do this, and that. Don't laugh, look funny. Okay, and then I pimple my eyes really fast. Okay. I squint down, and that's enough. And then I continue painting. And that's what I usually do that, like, I don't, I don't even know, but a lot of times. Okay. And on top of that, obviously, uh, where I use a mirror. Lately, I've been using my cell phone as a, as a mirror. Okay, I'm gonna pick up a clean brush. Oh, uh, Mr. D is asking me, can you do the same with acrylic paint? Yeah, uh, the, uh, the process is usually the same. You know, what's different with acrylic paints is uh, edges. Okay, we gotta be careful with edges because acrylic paint dries faster. Uh, we're gonna end up with sharp edges. Okay, for oil paint, I could use I could use a flat brush, filber, round anything. For acrylic paint, I could use mostly filber brushes okay. these ones filber brush why because of the i don't have a sharp edge on the on the corners for acrylics okay for oils i can just kind of switch between one or the other i use these ones look at these ones these are really awful okay but these are pretty good just to put paint down i don't care about edges yeah, so that, that's enough. After getting uh, the work done with this brush, I change to a softer brush, usually this one for blending, if I'm gonna blend. Elizabeth Beard Algrier is asking me how much linseed oil you use. I don't use too much, okay? Uh, sometimes I just use linseed oil to paint the background just for the background when I want to kind of spread the painting faster, but I didn't add any linseed oil today. Okay. I used to use a lot of linseed oil. I mean, I'm saying that because it's not something that has been the same for me. No, I used to use linseed oil and turpentine. 
you know, to the point that if I didn't have Lindsay Doyle and Troupenoid, it was, it was pretty difficult for me to paint. I need it. I need it always to have, you know, Lindsay Doyle or Troupenoid, half and half, and that was perfect for me. But now I just, I, I just don't need it. Maybe I, I will again, who knows when, but it's just uh, what I'm trying to say that it's up to anyone. It doesn't. I, I don't think that changed anything. I mean, yeah. sometimes. Uh, but you know, one thing for sure: if you're feeling somebody's feeling that you need linseed oil because the painting doesn't spread, doesn't flow on the canvas. The problem is the canvas. Okay. Now you're having a problem with with the canvas, no with the oil paint, no with linseed oil. What it means that you need an extra layer, you need to add an extra layer of gesso on the canvas. Ah, uh, Monique saying, I never realized how close the camera was to your face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I, I mean, it's pretty comfortable. Uh, when I, at uh, the beginning, I used to have my camera to my right. Yeah, I gotta say that I, I, I thought, okay, this is pre a pretty good position. You know, but because I didn't see the camera to my, it was in my right, the right side of my face. I didn't see it, I used to knock it down, you know, I used to knock it with my face. And now I can move freely behind the camera. Yeah. Gary saying you seem to be able to mix all the colors you need by using the sort palette. So what do you sometimes use eight or more colors to get the same results? Yeah. Good question. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I want a little variation, you know, the orange, I like the orange. I like to warm up with a touch of yellow. Yeah, I need a touch of a little crimson for sure. Yeah. And sometimes I need a little bit of green. Uh, I could get green just with black and yellow, but sometimes I want, uh, let's say, a cleaner green with blue. But, but at the same time, I gotta say that sometimes you check out some of my videos, I ended up the painting and I didn't even touch a couple of colors. You know, I put them down because I think I'm gonna need them, but it's not like I have to use all of them. If sometimes I don't. Up a clean brush. Hello, Maggi. Hello, Le uh, Hola, Le Montes on, on Facebook. Hello, Mohamed. Are you so tuned? You mean that you use only liquid for the first lay? No, you don't use any any medium. Uh, this thing I was explaining about liquid, I was explaining that about. Somebody asked, asked me about uh, why the painting cracked. And I was explaining that about the dry time on the layers. Hello, Eli, Eli Sart. Hello, Nair. Uh, Elizabeth said, so we can you just use the paint straight from the tube? We don't need other, you know. Yes, yes, we can use the paint straight from the tube. That's what I, that's what I do. Yeah, but for example, uh, uh, when I'm mixing this, I mean, it doesn't flow easily. I feel some kind of resistance here. That's because the painting is thick. Okay? Maybe somebody doesn't like that. And if you add a touch of linseed oil, you feel that uh, it's going to move different. It's going to make a change on the result of the painting. No, no, it's not going to make any change. It's gonna be just like 
how do you feel or how do you maybe it may, for example I remember one of my friends that he he paints with watercolors a lot so he paints watercolors like is that you know it's his thing I mean he paints watercolors and when you check out him when I used to check out him painting with oils he needed to use a lot of linseed oil a lot of medium but you know you know after you seen paint everybody can can tell that he did that because he was used to use a lot of water with watercolors and then kind of working with that many medium for him it was you know didn't feel okay yeah it's something like that it's mostly uh, what we are used to, to use yeah. and somebody could say that at the same time maybe using linseed oil is gonna just leave leave a different brush stroke yeah it could be Oh, you, if we don't, we need more layers. Yeah, yeah. yeah sometimes, uh, when if I work on top of this painting, I would love to add some glazes. For glazes, you know, a glaze is a very transparent layer of oil paint, and we make it that transparent by adding a lot of medium. In my case, a lot of linseed oil. Yeah, but that's uh, that's a change on uh, let's say let's say that that would be a different technique uh, hello David Scott using your technique when I finished my first commission and only thanks to your tutorials oh that's pretty good David yeah That's pretty good. Congratulations. Hello, Mr. Herb Jones. Do you mention paint cracking due to drying? Have you ever used crack, 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 crackling on your paintings to make it look aged? No. I have seen that. I have seen some people using that. But not for your paints, more for crafts. Okay. Uh, and I don't know what was the product, but I remember seeing that that cracked the painting like in just 20 minutes, really fast. Umber. Okay, that was pretty nice. Feel free to ask me more questions. I don't know all the answers, but you know, that's pretty nice. Hello, Michael. Garu, I watched the last still life painting you did with the candles. That was a top subject. Did, did you do more to the painting after you signed off? You can show the finished work. No, I didn't. 
Yeah, Garou is speaking about my acrylic channel. I painted uh, still life. I'm planning to paint, you know, continue the painting on my channel. Yeah. It's just, it's just next to me. The painting just waiting for me. Well, I hope in a couple of days. go back and try to finish up the painting we're gonna do it live don't worry everything is gonna stay on YouTube here I just use only medium I got Lindsay Doyle here because uh, well, I don't use medium uh, here on YouTube, but you know we have some sessions on Patreon, painting sessions on Patreon. And Tuesday we paint the human figure, and we used to try to paint as much as we can in two sessions. One session is just anatomy and the first layer. And the second session is for glazing. And that's why I always keep Lindsay Doyle here with me because we glaze, you know, a lot. David, uh, hello Totus, hello Laila, you're welcome, hello Arabi, yeah. David is asking me, is, do you, you mentioned last time you leave the mixed colors on the right hand side of the palette, yeah, keep it just the same, it is this, do you sell these amazing portraits like that with color mixed, still on the right, yes, yeah, 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 just do that. Yeah. I think that's an, I mean, I love to keep the palette. For me, it's just kind of a reading a little bit of the story of the painting. Even when the palette is completely a mess, we can see the colors. I don't know if the the people that bought me the some paintings have kept the palette. Well, I don't know. It's not like it's not like they have to do it, you know. It's just I sold uh, maybe one of the first paintings, like like uh, for one of my uh, tutorials, like maybe four or five years ago. It was like sixteen by twenty. Yeah, that was the first one I painted. 
Uh, it wasn't for YouTube. I painted that for for a course. I did a course, a course, and I remember this guy bought me the painting. You know, I know this guy for years, and he bought me the painting. He liked the painting. I was like, yeah, okay. He want the painting. I want money. It's perfect. <laughs> I told him try to keep the palette. You know. And he was mm, okay. And then I, I went to visit him to his office, and I saw the painting framed, and he cut <laughs> the palette. And he was like, I was trying to keep it like, but you know, it's kind of ruined the view of the face. And he was, you keep it? No, I just throw it away. Oh my God. Hola Víctor, qué bueno, uh -huh. gracias. Kumar is asking me, can you help me, help me with the, the mediums? I use turpentine and linseed oil, but don't know how properly mix the color, how proper, properly mix the colors or apply it on the canvas. You always get messy. Yeah. Yeah, maybe uh, it's not gonna be. It's, I think the problem that you have is not about the mediums. You know, um, I don't know how much experience you have painting, but it could be about just you getting used to all your paint and how all your paint just kind of behave, you know, on the surface. What happens you when you put more paint on top of paint is wet, or what happens when you let the painting dry and add the second layer. I mean, if you don't know about that, uh, and let's say that you're trying to get the result, the results that you see in any tutorial, you know, you gotta be sure that, for example, what you see is a, a tutorial or a video that is, it was, it's been painting, or painting's been painting just one session at La Prima, or in so many sessions, because it's different. We got different results. It's different when we paint at a prima, it's different when we paint in more sessions, when we add glazes, when we got transparency on the paint and the, on the canvas. Okay. And uh, that, that would be my suggestion. Try to just, just paint more and get used to the oil paint. Because this thing about getting muddy colors, for example, is uh is something like uh first muddy colors usually are are kind of you know uh that happens usually with darker colors and sometimes darker colors get mixed with lighter colors and but remember that what happens here on the palette when you mix a color is kind of the same that happens here but we don't expect that to happen here it's just like oh, what happens if i add a little bit of orange on top of this a mixture is gonna happen you know if I add a little bit of raw umber. Yeah, when, when we do this on top of the canvas, and we don't know what's going to happen. And the more we, we move the brush, trying to blend, trying to move the paint, uh, there's a good chance to end up with muddy colors. And it just like, uh, for example, I, I pick up paint from here, and I start painting here, you know, but maybe here. Yeah. Now, if I don't know what's going to happen, I'm going to say, hey, well, that's a muddy color. Yeah. Obviously, I try to keep a difference. I try to keep different brushes. One brush for darker colors, one brush for lighter colors. Why? Because I don't want that to happen. I know that's going to happen. Because everything is wet. Okay? Oh, Monique is saying that she keeps, Monique bought me a, a lot of uh, um, the paintings from YouTube and from Patreon, and she keeps the palette. Oh, that's pretty, that's pretty nice, Monique. 
Davey saying, what subject would you still love to paint but never have? Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I think, I don't know why I paint. Uh, you know, I was thinking about, about painting still life today. And I, start, I started to look for some photograph. But, you know, I, I, it's just like I, I'm, I've been looking for so many photographs to paint portraits. They always shut up, shut up on, on, my, on my Pinterest portraits, portraits. And I was looking for a nice still life. And I saw this photograph. I said, wow, yeah, I'm going to paint this a portrait again. <laughs> Yeah, at the end we paint what we love, you know. What we want at the end. If we're gonna if, if we're gonna paint portraits till my last my last day, I'm gonna do it. And if my thing that would be at some point uh, let's say landscapes, hey I'm gonna start painting landscapes. I think I would enjoy any subject. Sometimes what I feel that is I enjoy some subjects, but I don't go back to them. I don't know why. For example, I mean, uh, about, let's say, materials. I love painting with pastels. I have painted with pastels for years, you know, and I don't know why I stop. Even in my channel, I have like a few demos few lives, strange painting with pastels. I love that. Uh, but every time that I see the pastels and I think I'm going to paint a pastel portrait, I ended up, you know, kind of switching to oil paint. You think ink. I love the result of drawing with ink. And maybe it could be like I find that difficult and I, I don't want to just say it. Say it. <laughs> yeah. With ink, for example, you know, you made a mistake. Eh, it's gonna be easy, difficult to retouch it. With oil paints, we can just paint and repaint and repaint. It's pretty nice, you know. I can pick up a palette knife and take off a little bit of paint and continue painting again. Thank you, Steve Harris. blending a little bit I love the questions. More questions, please.
Garo is asking me how do you correct your mistakes when you use ink? Uh, yeah, I got here, I don't have it. You know, uh, when I use ink, I use these ones. I got them here because I'm planning to, to use them, you know. And uh, you're gonna find that there is a, a white ink. And that's the one I have used. Because that's impossible to erase. But with white ink is kind of, you know, kind of erasing. And uh, a few times what I did is I used a little bit of acrylic, white, white acrylic. Hello Sharon, hello Bruno, from Belgium, hello Jonas, yeah that's right Michael, we need to plan that very well, uh, Neil Rhodes is asking me on Facebook, do you ever put Damar varnish in your medium? Uh, no. No. Yeah. Uh, some of my friends, they used to mix, and it has a name, you know, that medium. They used to mix linseed oil and tropenoid and varnish. Okay. Okay, I tried it a few times, but it's pretty sticky and it kind of dries faster. I don't like that. I don't like the the oil paint dry the dry faster because I'm not prepared for that. I mean, that's what I want is the oil paint just to dry pretty slow. Man, when I paint with acrylics, I'm prepared for acrylic to dry faster. I mean, that would be the same if I start painting with acrylics. I notice that they don't dry. It will be for me like what. Well, What's happening? I mean, I don't like that. I don't like it. I wouldn't like it because, you know, I'm expecting that they're really dry, to dry faster. The same with oil paints, when I just, like, a couple of times, I remember because some of my friends told me, hey, that's pretty nice, you know, to paint with tropinoid, linseed oil, and varnish. And, yeah. And I, I, I did, I used it, and after maybe, uh, maybe just maybe 20 minutes not even an hour you can you still uh, can feel kind of sticky pretty pretty sticky at some point it was pretty difficult to blend i think it's gonna be better for if i mean not if somebody wants to blend the paint Davis Scott saying how many different techniques of color palette do you have to choose have to choose uh, choose from when trying to decide what colors work work best uh, to be honest uh, I don't have too many options uh, I love just a uh, limited palette you know and uh, yeah I don't uh, I, I love when I see painters using pretty, you know, amazing colors and so I often think I'm gonna need to buy some of those colors, but looks looks like I won't. And I keep saying that, I didn't buy any color yet, but uh, I don't know, uh, to be honest, uh, I kind of like just to start simple and continue as 
simple as much as possible okay and I always try to keep my attention more than color and values maybe that's the thing you know I keep squinting down my eyes and try to compare a lot and when I try to copy when I compare obviously I mean not just the drawing is values okay I try to see if this light has to be lighter or darker what about mid-tone I'm just looking for a reason to explain why you know as you can see look at my palette I got this something pretty simple here I'm gonna add more colors yeah for sure I'm gonna add uh, this and crimson I use the colors so soften okay Uh, Gary says, how do you decide on a backdrop color? What determines the color you use? I've noticed your con contrasting colors. Uh, yeah, I, do you mean about this, uh, my, my, my canvas? Yeah, okay. Okay, one thing for sure when I want, uh, let's say, um, the, the, sometimes I, I, I don't think that much about that. You know, it's just like I start using this uh, toned canvas and I choose that for a long time and then I switch to a different color. But it's not always the case, you know. Uh, when I have painted, for example, remember once I, I painted uh, some canvases with this fluorescent acrylics, you know, and I painted on top of that with oil paints. Okay just to I wanted to see how bright I could get some colors having that those other uh, fluorescent colors as a, as a base and it worked really good okay but it took me like a lot of layers just to kind of knock down some some colors I liked it but you know not to the point that I continue to use that I think I like uh, the transparency when I add glazes, but I see I love more the opaque colors. Yeah. Yeah. Janice, how important is to match the color, do you think? Is the correct color match also one of the points of the likeness? Uh, no, yeah, no. I don't think that matching the color has to do with likeness. Matching value has to do with likeness, for sure. You know, what happens with, when I say matching values is, for example, just, uh, for example, getting Here, for example, here, this is a value. Yeah, if I got this too dark, it's gonna affect the form of the cheek. If I got that too light, it's gonna change the shape, the form of the cheek. Okay, and that is gonna affect the likeness. That's a value. That's value. That's I mean, uh, it's a characteristic of the face, but that's values. It's the same here all those little things are values here making that darker for example what if I make this darker do you think that's gonna affect the form yeah okay and then I think it's more important trying to match value than color okay Maybe my color, I mean, and another thing at the same time, color is pretty difficult to match, especially when you work in just one session. 
ठीक है ओके बट अगर सही था मे बी वैल्यूज आर मोर डिफिकल्ट एंड डेफिनेटली यू नो वैल्यूज कैन मेक अ फेस लुक वायर और नेरोवेर The, the other thing that affects the likeness is the size of the features. You know, the size of the eyes, because we can get pretty good just about the position of the eyes, nose, and mouth. Next thing, check out the size, because why? Because we tend to draw or paint the eyes a little bit bigger, and that's pretty common for for a lot of us. Hmm. Gary saying I mean I, I meant to say you don't always use contrasting color for the for the backdrop. Oh okay. Uh, uh, mm, yeah. Okay. Well, I didn't notice that about myself. Uh, mm. Man. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean I try to be aware of every step step I take, but obviously, maybe few few things that I do are kind of, they say, mechanical because I've been doing this so many times, and I don't realize about some few things that maybe I do when I paint. David is saying, I noticed you don't use orange in a lot of painting by red. So what makes you decide when the orange options comes out? Okay. Yeah. Well, speaking about orange, I'm gonna add more orange to my palette. Hmm. Okay. A lot of the colors are just about uh about the pigment, about what color have you tried to use, what you think they're gonna work. For a long time, uh, I have used yellow Nap Naples yellow or yellow Naples. Sorry if I mispronounce it. Okay, and I found that pretty useful, pretty nice, and I used that color for a long time. Okay. And based on what, on my results, because I liked it. And then I stopped using, I don't even know why. But, you know, we have a lot of colors to choose from. Uh, I'm planning to buy, I have cadmium yellow here. I want, I want to buy cadmium yellow light, which I think is pretty good. Or Indian red, which I think is pretty good. Okay. It's just like sometimes, we cannot use all of them. I would love to try to use all of them someday. Now, uh, I change from one color to another based on, on what I paint, you know, because obviously I'm copying the photograph. And I mean, they're trying to get closer. Yeah, I know that getting the, the value, you know, match the color is going to be pretty difficult. I'm trying to match the value. But you don't see me painting like, for example, the face is kind of an, a variation of an orangey color. You know, it could be more yellowish, it could be more reddish, it could be more saturated or mute. You know, that's what I try to get. You know, try to get closer to the photograph. Okay. Oh, Gary, he's speaking about background colors. Uh, yeah, I mean, that that depends on what I want. Uh, sometimes, uh, uh, let's say, sometimes I just want more contrast. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I, I, I feel my painting is kind of boring. You know, like, uh, I can say, hey, you know, I got just one color, but I see that on the photograph. And I think, hey, what if I change the reflected light here? And instead of having this reflected light that looks like it's the same light, it's just bouncing back, I just create an, 
new light here and make it why not bluish why not purple why not green I mean one light one reflected light that I love is orange okay but we can change the color we can just this and when I start doing that I think about the background I could make it may maybe darker here lighter here or, or vice versa depending on what I want but if I make a change that would be based just in what I see on my painting you know we paint uh, we paint what we see obviously you know we uh, we're copying from the photograph at some point I want to add something more when I see uh, masters painting painters you know and I've been watching some photograph from the portrait society like there was a contest I think a week ago you know one thing for sure when I when I saw those those painters each one of those paintings has some magic and the magic on that painting the atmosphere all of that it doesn't have to do anything with copying from the photograph you can tell that they added something more it's, it could be about ages it could be about color it could be about you know a combination of all of that when I doing things like this like changing the color or adding orange or any other color I'm trying to, to do that I'm trying to add some magic when I try to lost an age I'm trying to add a little bit of that you know we all trying when we paint trying to, to get a little bit of that yeah? we try all the time and some paintings I think hey I got it I love it some paintings is just like, hey, you know, I, I should have just lost some edges a little bit more. You know, that sharp edge is for real kind of hurting my painting. You know, things like that. We all want that, yeah? That's the reason that I think that we ought to admire just the masters. Because they, they, uh, they got to that point to add that to get an amazing portrait painting or any painting and you we will see the painting we when we just see that it's not just a copy from a photograph but the thing that we don't know is just how they do that how how did they do that how they added that magic touches or brush strokes because that has to do with the, their own experience and knowledge mm -hmm. oh hello Mary Evelyn is asking me the size I think this is nine by nine Okay, thank you, David. Yeah, the Portrait Society of America. I was watching the winners, and I saw that. You know, uh, it looks like uh, it, it's. Uh, it looks for me it's about copying reality. Uh, but adding this magical thing that. That it makes the painting special and separates obviously painting from from photograph. Hey, we all we all the same, you know. Uh, journey to try to to discover that. I was checking, you know, and the paintings, and I always think that ages has to do with a lot of the magical that happens on paintings. Yeah. And every time that I paint, I remember I mentioned that, you know, we got to soften some edges. We know that we want to see, we love to see every detail, that's for sure. When, when, but in order to, you know, to get those results, it kind of, we have to make some sacrifices and sacrifice on, on details. On, on kind of not seeing every little thing on a, on a painting 
But that's, that's the hard thing. The hard, it's pretty hard. But when somebody's a beginner, you know, the first thing that we got to focus on is uh, proportions, values on top of everything, you know, ages. And after that, we start just to look for the magical thing that makes a difference on the paintings. I would say pay attention always to edges. You check you you go check out to check out those the, the winners, check out on edges of those paintings. You're gonna see amazing things on that. And the funny thing that control that to that point, you know, to see reality and and at the same time to have some softness and atmosphere. It's pretty difficult. David Scott is telling me if you came to England, you could be on national TV. <laughs> okay, that would be nice. <laughs> oh, the portrait Ar artist of the year. Yeah, I have seen that poem. Yeah, pretty nice. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, Ilya Sartakia is asking me which I should start painting with acrylic or, or oil. Uh, I would tell you, um, okay, uh, you know, it's always like everybody starts with acrylics. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but it depends. I mean, what what do you want to do? It's, it's just like you want to paint with oils, start painting with oils. It's not like you, I want to paint with oils, hey, I want to start with acrylics. I mean, I, I wouldn't say that. That's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, but what I would say about acrylics, you know, acrylics are kind of push you to the limits about mixing colors. But with oil paints, when everything is wet, I can continue mixing here, adding more paint here. Okay, it's just like, uh, for example, I, uh, I added a little bit of blue there. Yeah, it got mixed, I got a color. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, I can just continue doing the same. For example, here, I'm gonna make it a little bit lighter. I can add this color. Hey, look, it's so different from here, but I put it down here and I mixed. And based of my experience, I got what I wanted because kind of knew what's gonna happen when I mix this one with this one here. If you do that with acrylics, you pick up this color and put down the brush stroke, it's gonna just you're gonna see this color there. Maybe a little bit transparent, but if you wanna paint that, you're gonna need to mix that color again. If you're gonna paint this, you need to mix the color again because the painting is not, doesn't mix. In that, you realize that at some point you're mixing more when you paint with acrylics, more and more. Yeah, you have to just kind of don't stop mixing, mixing and mixing again and again. And that could say that's a pretty good exercise for mixing colors. And at the end, we got pretty good things from acrylic for painting but if you go is paint with oils start painting with oils mm. 
you know, imagine if I tell you, hey, your goal is painting with acrylics. If I tell you, hey, paint, start painting with oils. Get used to oils and then paint with acrylics. That would sound like, what? Why I could do that? Doesn't sound logic. It's the same. <laughs> you know, it's the same thinking. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna paint with oils. I'm gonna start with acrylics. I mean, why? The, I mean, the answer is kind of always, yeah, you know, it's cheaper, it's easier, we just need water and that's it. Yeah, but uh, speaking about your goal, I mean, you're not going to get to that goal, just, it's going to be the same logic like thinking, hey, I'm going to just, I'm going to paint, I'm going to paint watercolors, yeah, yeah, I'm going to start with oils. I mean, I mean no. <laughs> Hmm. Oh, David Scott, obviously you copy from a picture beside you. I would love to see how you get that great likeness when copying from life. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty difficult. Yeah, yeah. No, def definitely, I mean, yeah, I'm not going to say that I mean, it's easier here. The, Nothing move. I got the the this, the uh, the image at the same size. I mean, everything is my setup is perfect for trying to get the likeness. But I have painted. I have done live demos. You know, uh, and uh, I maybe I have done more live demos when I worked as a teacher four or five years ago. It was. Yeah, and. Everything there was just live demos from the students uh, going to different cities, you know, trying to promote the School of Art where I was working. And I was the, the one that you know, I was doing the demos. And they choose kind of anyone, you know, like, hey, when I do a demo, who wants to be painted? Me. And I was, okay. I was pretty happy when, when somebody just let me to pick up somebody, you know. Because I used to look for the faces and I used to look for some, something. Like somebody with thick eyebrows, with a longer nose, with anything that would be kind of easy to to paint. But sometimes just they put me somebody there like, hey. And people just watching me paint. And obviously I didn't get, maybe uh, let's say it from 10 sessions I got the likeness that pretty good in maybe two sessions. Yeah. The other ones are kind of close. But no, no, not to the point that everybody's gonna say, oh that's pretty good. No. No, that's difficult. And and, and in a couple of hours, I mean that's just too much. Pretty stressful. <laughs> Imagine, you know, you you uh, when you paint for painters, it's kind of difficult. The painters are around you. Look at your painting. They just think, okay, yeah, it's getting close, but they need they need he needs to do this and that. But don't they, don't say it out loud. When you paint in front of people that they don't know, they are not painters. You just look at you. It's pretty common to hear somebody just, you know, saying, well, it doesn't look like the person. It's not that good. Yeah. You know, and <laughs> what are you going to do? You got to just go on. Yeah. Steve Harris asking me when you sell when you sell a new painting, how long do you allow it to dry before you ship it out? Okay, uh, that would be maybe. Uh, oh, it depends, you know, like maybe a week. Yeah. I mean, the faster, yeah. If 
uh, if you check out my channel, I painted uh, some of the paintings with really thick, thick paint, but with a lot of oil paint. Yeah, for sure, I gotta wait. I gotta wait, wait more. Yeah. But painting like this one, maybe a week, two weeks. If I touch it and it's kind of sticky, yeah, I wait. I will wait more. Okay, I squinted down my eyes and trying to see where's the lightest light and looks pretty clear that the lightest light is here. Now what about the temperature? I don't see like it's pretty yellowish. I could make it kind of more yellowish to add some warm color here. Yeah. But what I see is just like I could get this color just by adding white. I don't see like it's pretty warm. Okay, if it's not warm, it could be neutral, it could be cool. Okay, when we add white, we're cooling down any color. Why? Because white doesn't have any yellow. Yellow is the, the one that warm up colors. White just, just cool down colors. Uh, can I ask you, Renzo, David Scott is telling me, do you hide some tips to yourself or do you put it all, it, put it all out there? I know, notice all artists hold back a bit, but you are very giving. Uh, gee, I don't know, I mean... Hmm. Maybe I hold, I'll, hold, I'll hold back something. <laughs> No, I don't think so. I mean, I, I say like everything, uh, you know, it's, it's just like uh, it's just like we got all the information if any book about color theory, about all of those things, you know, yeah, things that would make a difference maybe on that would be uh, the way we, let's say, move the brush or because that's personal, you know, the, the brush we use, if we put more pressure, less pressure, if we lay down more or less paint. Okay. I think that makes a difference. It's a different, it's kind of a little bit different from painter to painter. But uh, the information is out there, the same in every book. Sometimes we see it, I see it, sometimes, you know, I see painters maybe not, not saying a few things, but they are doing those things. And yeah. Yeah. But feel free to ask me more questions, you know, you are, because... I don't know, maybe I'm holding back something. And I don't know. <laughs> but I gotta say, at the same time, this kind of common. I mean, I have studied in the School of Art for six years, and for sure I, I have, I mean, I, I have a lot of friends, and few of them, few, few of them, like one every a hundred friends, it's like, uh, uh, I remember especially a couple of them, I remember one of my friends, like, he painted a really nice painting, Really nice, nice, you know. And then I get closer to his painting, close like that, like almost touching with my nose, just, you know. And he was like, whoa, 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 don't get so close. <laughs> you know? And I mean, that's not, that's not bad. I, can't, I mean, we are just human beings. I mean, but that's gonna be like, Maybe I, I think he thought that uh, he got something pretty nice on his painting. It was pretty good. 
uh, he didn't want anything any, anybody just try to to get the scene because he thought it was his thing who knows you know and I remember another friend that he used to he was painting always all the time you know and when every time everybody was close to to him he stopped painting you know and he was pretty good painting and some some of some people say hey let's see how he paints and as soon as you get closer to his easel he stopped painting it was like and then uh you know uh we became friends pretty close friends and i asked him you know why do you stop you know i don't like to you know to be observed i don't like when people get around me and want to watch me paint it's not like you don't want to somebody saw you what how you see what you how you paint how you your secrets no i don't care about that i just don't like to be like you notice you know my setup i try to just i love just paint alone it was kind of different you know yeah? for him it was just like that and we share a studio with four or five friends and he was just like that. He just lo loved to kind of pick up a place where nobody, where not not get in touch with no, nobody, just just painting alone. And as soon as soon as somebody get close, like you know, to speak to him, he stopped painting. He, he was like, I don't like to, you know. I just wanna paint alone. And at the same time, I gotta say, like mostly. My friends, they were pretty open about what they were doing. Like 90%, 95%, they were like, what are you doing? Oh, I'm using this and that. What's this? Oh, this is, I don't know, I'm mixing Lindsay Doyle with varnish. It looks pretty good. Yeah, I want to try it. Yeah, 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 try it. Yeah. How do you get this color? Oh, I got this color because I bought this new painting. And I think it's pretty nice. Everybody was just like, mostly like that. Hey, I gotta remember that. Ask everybody to uh, press the like button. <laughs> okay. I'll turn off one light. I remember that you, uh, if anyone wants to paint with me, I got paint alone lessons on Patreon. That's the link in the description box. Oh, oh, Monique said I just got a commercial. <laughs> Hello, Dita. Yeah. <laughs>
Okay, here the light, for example, we can add a little bit of uh, yellow and white. But let's just put it here, a touch. Just a tiny touch, okay? That's gonna create a highlight there. Okay, it's gonna glow a little bit more than the rest because of, because of the yellow. The same way I could, I could do on the nose for the highlight here. Okay, the intention obviously that is make those highlights to pop a little bit forward. If I add this yellowish color here, a touch, I'm not gonna add the yellowish color here, okay? I can keep that mute. Just adding a little bit of green even. Okay, lighter. But mute. Why? Because I'm, I want this really see. Okay. Now check out if that works because we can. You have so many options. You know, we can even put that and add some light blue. Pretty pretty light blue. This area has light, but now it has color. It's not just one color. Okay, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show that here. Can you see? Can you see? Evelyn is asking me, is it, it easier to paint portrait the same size of the person's face or the size doesn't matter? <coughs> well, thank you, Rosie. Yeah, now, this thing about these colors here, we can just add more to that, okay? Now, obviously, from a distance, it doesn't look that, like uh, there are too, too many colors there. And that's something pretty common. Yeah, sometimes a painter add, add those with uh, glazes. Just sometimes on the first session, but uh, those are subtleties that add more color and we have when we have more color especially opposite colors like this is yellow this is blue light yellow light blue those are opposite colors in temperature okay the add a little bit of luminosity to the light a little bit okay Oh, I got a question. I forget to answer the question. What was the question? Oh, the measurement. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, it's easier. It's easier. Obviously, it's easier because we compare a lot. Mm. Yeah. I prefer the same size. It's not like for, for practicing. I would recommend always try painting with the same size. Okay. Uh, I think this is is just easier to compare. Especially if you're trying to get the likeness. Okay. It's not like because we got used to that, it's going to be kind of impossible for us to to paint for a different size. No, that's not going to happen.
David, uh, sorry, I think my message was del del deleted. I don't think so. Uh, oh, Nolan is asking me, do you have a mentor while in college? Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I don't, yeah, you know, like, I didn't spend that much time with all the teachers, uh, but I remember especially one teacher in the first year, the drawing. She was pretty nice, but it was, I remember her more about, uh, because she was pretty, I mean, she mo motivates everybody pretty good, like, you know, and that's pretty good, I think, especially for somebody that's, that's, that is a, a beginner. Yeah. It's not like she was going everywhere saying, hey, your work is pretty good, your work is pretty good. No, it wasn't like that. Because, I mean, that's pretty easy just to know when somebody's just saying that to everybody, even when you see that somebody has so many mistakes. She was she points out mistakes all the time, like, and, but she was, I don't know, I don't remember exactly how, but I remember, I remember her being so nice, so sweet. And then our, um, mm, yeah, sorry, I don't remember having a mentor. Yeah. Admiring some painters, yes. Yeah, that for sure. Try to remember. Yeah. On the last year, I remember one of the teacher that was he was. He was pretty good. Uh, he remember he she showed. Some of uh, the process of his paintings in some videos. That was pretty nice, you know. At that time, no YouTube, nothing. Usually teachers, they don't paint in front of you. They don't touch your paintings. It was just like a, a rule, they say, don't touch the student's canvas. It, it was more about indications. Yeah, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. Uh, that was the education at the time. Now it's different. Yeah? So different. What, what about the blue here? Look at that more up here. Okay, David, you have time, Brian, so can you view my portrait on on 
and and art 2023 okay 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 yeah, I wanna look for that. Jonas is, is asking: Is it recommended to use different kind of lights instead of instead of one light? Hello, Joanne. Uh, 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 I think. Uh, hmm. I'm thinking about my light. <laughs> yeah, I'm not good on that. I try. I mean, I bought a set of lights that the photographer photographers they used to use. Yeah, and the only thing I, I said it, it was kind of a neutral light. I don't want a yellowish light. I don't want something bluish. And they told me, "Hey, this is the light." And I think they just have light like white light and yellowish light the yellowish one is warm warm you know light and what i the one i have is not the yellowish one here on, on my studio and i got uh, that and hey basically just that now i used to work like a few months ago maybe more than a few months ago with fluorescent lights remember i don't know maybe nobody just does tubes long tubes white tubes i used to work with them like you know six or seven of those tubes and that was pretty nice for me that was pretty that was enough uh, that's all i needed and now uh, i moved to a different house and then it was kind of difficult for me to go back to my you know to my setup to my usual setup and I was thinking, oh, putting back again all those fluorescent lights, that would be kind of difficult. And then what I did, I go, I went to buy this photographer set, and that's it's working pretty good. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, and. And they, they have some kind of white fabric, just kind of transparent white fabrics uh, that soften the light. I didn't have those before. And I think that works pretty good to for the you know reflected lights. But anyway, I got some glare. You see on top of the head, if I turn off one light here, that glare is gone. Yeah but for me it's kind of darker i gotta just turn it turn it on again oh i noticed something now that's the step back I the, the, the forehead is kind of orangey I mixed a raw umber and white and I put it on top here to knock down the, the orange. It was too orange on the forehead. Um. <clears throat> yeah, David is asking me, do you ever use liquid on the hair to get thinner and longer lines? Oh no. Yeah, but yeah, I think it's pretty good for working with you no know, this thin liner brushes do you, do you, you ever stop in one station David is asking me that uh, yes uh, uh, maybe a couple of times I try to paint as much as possible but I remember a couple of times times just uh, and maybe it was because uh, I got more things to paint than just a face more than just a face and then I stop painting. It was just maybe a couple of times. I don't remember exactly, but I remember in my Spanish channel, I stopped once because I just, I got, got tired and trying to, to get the likeness and I was like, okay, no way, I'm not gonna get it. 
Yeah, spend a lot of time. I'm gonna paint this on the second session, and I stop, and I continue on the second session. I remember that. And I stop because I wanna get the likeness. I remember I was painting this actor. I think it's Ben Stiller. I think it's Ben. It was Ben Stiller. Yeah. When I couldn't get the likeness. It was like it was here, it was him, but at the same time it was like moving too much. Moving too much I mean like every 10 minutes it kind of I lost him and then I got it and then I lost him again. And I was just like, oh my god, no, you know, I gotta stop and just take a rest and continue on a second session. And I did it, I did a second session and even a third session because... Oh no, I thought that his face is what is, it was gonna be easier for me to paint and that turns out being difficult face. Ludmila, I say I'm so happy to see you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Francesco. Uh, hello, Jorge. Oh, good evening. Good night, David. Oh, David is asking how much would you, ch would you charge if somebody asked you to to do a family? Okay. Um, oh no, it depends on the size. Oh, thank you so much. I got an email. I got a coffee from Nolan. Thank you so much for the coffee, Nolan. Oh, by the way, that now I gotta put the link <laughs> here. Somebody just wants to invite me a coffee. The link is on the description. I'm gonna put the link here anyway. Thank you so much, Nolan. Yeah, uh, oh, okay. Uh, uh, David, I, you know, the prices goes like around four hundred, five hundred dollars to eight hundred, nine hundred dollars. It depends on the size. Bigger size, you no, know, more price. Uh, this brush, brush I use for blending to paint the hair.
and start adding more color for example we know the nose the cheeks the uh, eyebrow uh, the eyelid and the chin has more color give another touch of red pink okay like here just a touch and, and we mix the color just be sure we gotta be sure the value is the same okay the nose pretty subtle okay pretty pretty subtle I mean we can exaggerate this uh, at the same time you know it's up to any painter sometimes we love we love just to put more color on the faces okay for the some uh, darker shadows for example for the mouth for example for the mouth I would mix a lizard and crimson with cadmium red okay and I paint this it's darker but transparent here the same okay a little bit reddish here more red for the lips more pink I need another brush David saying that's too cheap for what you do. Raise your, your prices. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, Mary. Good night. <laughs> David saying, uh, "What the colors on the on her, in her eyes? The color is uh, it's, it's like uh, I, I added." Cobalt blue and white, but got mixed with the color that's here. Uh, David Saint Rays of Watch, an artist called Michael G. Smith. Uh, yeah, I think I know him. I think I have seen him. Some amazing landscapes, yeah? very realistic. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Bye, Monique. Thank you. Hello, Wanda Flanagan. Wanna say I join? <laughs> hey, don't forget to click the like button before you go. <laughs> Just kidding. Now I'm thinking about color more and more. Okay, I'm adding this blue beca because just you know I don't have too many uh, variety on, on colors. It's just like basically classical brownish portrait. 
sometimes I want a little bit of color. If uh, I, it's just about trying to see if the work is working or not, you know. If it's not working, I just can knock it down and and go back to just mix orange, raw umber, and get the color back, you know. Because uh, the color that I mixed, the colors that I mixed to get the skin color was orange, raw umber, and white. As simple as that. And I can always just go back to those mixtures. Mixing a little bit of, <coughs> I'm sorry, alizarin crimson and raw umber. A little bit allergic. Sorry. But not allergic to oil, oil paint. It's just like sometimes I get the flu and I don't stop coughing like for a month. Sometimes. Two hours. Mm -hmm. <coughs> now Evelyn is asking me when I join Patreon, do I have to rejoin every month, or does it uh, does it automatically renew? Yeah, if you don't stop, that's gonna go month after month. Oh, uh, good night, uh, Arisotun. Saying good night from Myanmar, Burma. Oh, nice, very nice. Mm -hmm. uh, d thank you, David. Hmm. Mm -hmm. hey, somebody wants to join my patron. The lower tier starts just at four dollars per month to paint Saturdays. We paint along Saturdays on Zoom. We paint landscapes, animals, still lives. We paint two Saturdays with oil paints and two Saturdays with acrylics. And then from there, it goes up. And let's say to the VIP tier, where you got access to everything, and where where we paint portraits, is a hundred dollars. 
we paint Sundays for five, four to five hours. And Tuesdays we paint him a figure. Tuesdays night and access to uh, 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 to a lot of you know. Check out the, the patron. There are there are uh, four or five you know options there. a little bit of red in the background. I'm gonna use a little bit of linseed oil for the hair. And the brushes I use, uh, you can use thin brushes or a uh, round brush. The brushes that I use are the brushes for blending. You see the stage? Look at that.
<clears throat> Thank you, Ben. Hello, Linda. How wonderful Flanagan is asking me how can I join your class? Oh, that's the link. Um, I'm gonna put the link here on Facebook. One second. Uh, that's the link, uh, Wanda. I'm going to start adding a little bit more color, some accents. Okay, uh, mixing orange and red. I'm going to put a little bit here. It's not going to stay that saturated, okay, because I, I, I do this, I move the brush, I blend a little bit. Okay, I want to add some transparency there, a little bit, okay. A little bit more. I gotta check out my drawing proportions all of that usually we gotta go over that again and again okay here it's a little bit darker I gotta soften this edge. Darker there, a little bit darker here. Now the shape of the chin. I gotta move the chin a little bit up. Just a tiny bit. Mixing a little and crimson and coming red. I'm putting the color here and mixing the color here.
the light here. It's too bright. I knock it down. Just with the same brush, I, I clean the same brush and I go just like blending. <coughs> Hello, Nikki. Thank you. Hola, Jose. Tengo canal en español, José. Darken up a little bit more the shadow here. Okay, I'm gonna mix orange and blue, a touch of coming red, a touch of black. I'm pushing the light, kind of pushing the nose. They say pushing the shadow. Yeah, a little bit there. You see, kind of my nose is tilted more than the photograph. Yeah, I think it's about the light here. And now, move the shadow here. Okay. 
Mm-hmm. <clears throat> little bit of more orange and red little bit of calcium crimson with raw umber bit more blue on the face mm, yeah just put a little bit more just here Here I see a little bit of uh, a shadow here. Mm -hmm. Gotta soften the edge here. Soften the edge there. A little bit more shadow in the corner of the mouth. clean the brush just to soften that okay. <coughs> okay. oh Jose say can you please teach him to us how, how to mix from the primers colors into all colors okay yeah, uh, okay 
Uh, okay, I mean, uh, I would need to prepare a, just a new, you know, tutorial, a new live stream, and I'm gonna just do it. Yeah, I think it's a good idea, you know, with uh, just primary colors. Yeah. Uh, but if okay now one thing um, uh, it's better you know for for mixing the skin color it, it's not like we need a lot of colors we can use a lot of colors of course I mean it's up to anyone but if you want to practice you know because if you if you're if you want to practice using just primary colors uh, I could tell you just try to paint uh, still lives because that's when we use more I mean unless maybe you paint a portrait but let's say with a lot of color on the background or with a lot of color on, on, on a dress uh, yeah, the other way that's gonna be you know if you see I can get the skin color used with what Nikki is suggesting there, the, the sword palette. The sword palette is pretty simple, but the sword palette is not gonna work if you wanna paint a still life or a landscape. It's gonna work just basically for a portrait. Yeah, okay, if you wanna practice how to mix color with primary colors, you gotta pick up still lives. They want to get the most for painting still life because why? Because we, we can paint different objects with different colors. Yeah. Okay, uh, when uh, I was a student, you know, I think I used more colors when I was painting still lives for sure. Imagine painting a, a, a blue fabric some oranges, an apple, or so many, a bottle, so many objects. Each object has different colors. When I start to paint portraits, it's kind of a reduction of everything. For practicing mixing colors, you know, a portrait is, is not gonna be uh, what you need. Yeah. Okay, uh, it's not like, uh, like saying, hey, I want to paint portraits, I want to just practice painting portraits and getting the skin color. Mm, okay, that's not going to be enough, you know. It's just like saying, hey, I want to paint a tree and I want to just mix colors for a tree. and wanna, It's just one object. It's difficult, you know, because there remain so many variations and transparencies on the skin. But for a beginner, it's not what a beginner needs. Yeah. It would be nice, you know. I think I, I think I could do it. Pick up uh, primary colors. Yeah. I mean, you can tell that this is kind of primary. You take out the alizarin crimson and orange. What you got is just yellow, red, blue, and black and white. It's just that.
Squinting down my eyes and comparing again. <laughs> okay, let's see if I gotta move something. I think my work is gonna be about smaller things, like for example, a little bit of a shadow here. Come it on. Light here. Just suffering some ages.
I'm just adding pure black. Softening the edges. Yeah, here I'm going to add a little bit of black. Black and alizarin green. I'm going to turn off the light that creates this glare. Let's see. Wow, it's too dark. Now that it's darker, I see something that's happening here. Cobalt blue, white, Okay, it's my brush to work on the eye. <clears throat> hello Marina and hello Kijo. Thank you. Hello Raul. Thank you, Nikki. Pop drink water is asking me to compare this on Photoshop. Okay, I will. I just wanna do something, something more. Okay. Now what I'm thinking is uh, maybe I soften more the edges. Hmm. Just see how much I can do that.
Try just to soften <clears throat> it just here and there. Oh, I was thinking about working on, on the eye. light here okay I'm gonna compare it with Photoshop uh, I'm gonna capture my screen I'm gonna turn off this light because uh, but it's too dark eh? oh anyway I'm gonna see the glare okay I'm opening Photoshop Enrique is asking me about the palette uh, no I keep the palette with the painting Hello Dirk Schiller, thank you, thank you Nikki. Okay, I'm gonna share Photoshop. Just one second please. Okay, here's Photoshop. Uh, I'm gonna make uh, this the photograph a little bit bigger. Oh, sorry, because of, of these lines here. Okay, that's there. I'm gonna flip it. I really like it. I see, you know, uh, something on the nose. I think I gotta just uh, here about this light here. Yeah. Mm, maybe more shadow here. Okay, let's pick up some color. Shadow here. Light here. 
uh, what is hey, mm, I changed the shape of the neck you see the neck is going like that and I did it like that let's put it back now this uh, another thing that we should do when we check out the paintings is values for values we do this by doing this I realize that I need to darken up here okay and here we see light but you see shadow here so my painting more I need to add shadow there now obviously we cannot get to this point to, to get this by squinting down our eyes we try to get to that point to see those little you know differences are pretty subtle those differences are pretty subtle okay we use a black mirror to check out that okay I, I'm pretty happy with my painting obviously you know definitely there's, there are there are few things that are off you know but that's pretty nice you know that's pretty good okay. uh, if I gotta say what well, should put more attention to after getting the drawing done okay it's gonna be about values okay darken up here for example I gotta darken up here I gotta darken up here and it's not like we need Photoshop for to do all of this but we can just do this with our cell phones you know every cell phone now is basically a computer there are some apps that we can use to do that to do the work okay uh, now I love uh, the softness here on the hair I don't know why but on this painting I, I feel like I should exaggerate it's kind of you know get some lost pretty lost edges I think that's gonna add something more some softness that uh, already the, the the face you know look at look at the face the model's face it had that softness uh one thing about the, the light here it looks it looks white this it doesn't look like that on the painting but on my camera it looks almost white anyway uh, maybe if i zoom in oh yeah that's better look at that that's that's the value it's not white white Now, uh, on this particular painting, I am going to just soften more everything, okay? I'm going to kind of make everything blurry. I want to see how it looks. Need a bigger brush, or well, maybe uh, uh, this one is gonna do the work. Let's see. I'm gonna sacrifice some details, but I wanna see what happens. Okay. I just want to. Look how blurry is this. Totally, a total lost age.
This frame brush is pretty nice. This smaller one. But this is pretty pretty nice. there I like it yeah but it has to be a little bit darker here Okay, I think hmm, I think that's it. Yeah. It's been almost three hours. Let me check out some comments. Thank you, Wanda. <coughs> Dorina Dorina is asking me, I love to paint but not drawing. Do I have to draw where in order to paint portraits? Okay. Yeah, I mean, an absolute... I mean, you're gonna, you're gonna get better portraits if you practice drawing. You know, but at the same time, you can trace and paint portraits without practicing too much drawing. But one thing is gonna happen. When we paint, when we add paint, that moves the drawing a little bit. And if you know how to draw, you're gonna be able to, you know, to put it back and we need we need you know to get better results but at the end the painting is so free that you can just paint like I said just traced and paint yeah nobody, nobody's gonna tell you hey that's not okay or maybe somebody's gonna tell you that but you know who cares uh, painting is so free to do whatever we want about getting the results is the thing See, yeah. al final varnish las pinturas. I apply varnish at the end. Thank you, Arabi. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Okay, I think. That's it for today. Yeah. Yeah, it's not that I see more, I don't see more things that I gotta just put paint, correct, and continue painting and paint. You know. But I, I, I wanted to get to the point that I got obviously light shadows and softness on the face. I think I got to the point. I want to soften this even more, but I mean, if I continue softening, I could sacrifice the tears. And we need some tears, you know, some sharp tears in order to show the likeness. I, I like it. I like the softness. I don't want to do anything more, I think. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you so much for being here. Okay. Oh, hope you like it. And 
Here I am. Okay. Okay. Hope you like it, enjoyed, and learned something. You know, you uh, you can ask me any question during the process. Uh, don't forget to press the like button and subscribe. If you're not subscriber. Uh, subscriber. Uh, and see you next time. Okay. See you next week. Usually go live Thursdays. Take care, everybody. See you next time. Okay. Mm, okay. Bye, Garu. Thank you. Oh, Garu is asking me when will you do charcoal and acrylic again? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've been a little bit sick. I don't know if you have noticed I've been coughing a little bit. I gotta maybe next week. Yeah, I'm gonna start again going live on my drawing and painting acrylic again. Okay. Thank you, Nikki, Sylvia. Thank you all. See you all next week. Okay. Bye. Take care.